What is up guys? Back with a new video today all about shadows and highlights. So I know I've touched on the two before in previous videos, but I haven't done a video focused solely on the concept. So that's what today's video is going to be about. The most common question I get from people is, okay, I understand how to do them, but how do you know where to place them? How do you know what goes where? So I'm going to answer that in today's video. Uh, with today's video, I'm actually going to be using a current in progress uh, client commission piece. Uh, it's actually a t-shirt design for a good friend of mine, stand-up comedian who's been featured multiple times on the Bob and Tom show. His name is Jeff Bodart. So if you're a fan of Bob and Tom, you might know his work already. But if you don't, I'm going to put a link in the description to his website. Uh, and then also, since this is a t-shirt that's going to be offered for sale, I'm going to put the link to the final design in there. So let's go ahead and roll into the video. <laughs> Okay, so I've already got a uh, design pulled up here. This is a current commission piece that I'm working on. And since I wanted to do a, a shadowing and highlighting video, uh, kind of seemed like the perfect opportunity to use something that's kind of in the process right now. As you can see, I've already done the, the inking lines here on this top layer, and then this bottom layer here are the, uh, the color flats. So those layers are already done, but we're gonna focus on the, uh, the shadows and the highlights for this video. So uh, first things first, starting out is kind of deciding where your light source is going to come from. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and make it come from this direction here. So with that in mind, let me turn off the streamline. Uh, with that in mind, pretty much uh, everything on this edge is going to have your highlights. So the highlights are going to be in this part. Your shadows then are going to be cast on this part. Uh, I know a lot of people in the comments have asked for, uh, you know, tips on shadowing and highlighting. Um, they said, hey, I understand how you get them there, but I just don't really understand how to place them. So I thought a video like this, just walking you through a, a real life commission piece might kind of help to see where my mind goes to, uh, to get everything where it needs to be. So um, if you need help with, you know, seeing how light bounces off of things, the best suggestion I can give is honestly just grab a item, just anything, and, and set it on a desk and shine a flashlight around it and just kind of see in real life where that light bounces off of and how the, the light affects the, the shadows on a, an object in real life. So, uh, so let's get going. We're gonna go ahead and add a new layer. So this layer is gonna go in between your lines and your colors. Uh, with this, I'm using Procreate on the iPad Pro. This tutorial, not really about the techniques used, um, app-based it's honestly something that you can use in any program that you're uh, using currently so if it's Photoshop if it's uh, clip studio anything like that even I mean if you're using markers and stuff this will kind of come in handy uh, but as far as the the process here this can be transferred to any program that's going to use layers and have opacity options so I've got the new layer made and I'm gonna make sure I'm on a black here and then I use Natural Inker, which I'll put a link uh, in the description of the video to this because I love this uh, pen. I've put it in some of the, the previous video descriptions, but this thing is fantastic. So uh, I'll go ahead and back out of here. All right. I usually start with the shadows, do the highlights last. I'm also going to make this a reference layer. So that way, anything that I want to drag and drop on this layer will reference this and use the autofill. So... Just go ahead and get started. When I first go in, I usually just completely fill in a solid color here, and then I'll adjust the opacity. So on uh, Procreate, for example, the opacity you'll get to through the wand up here, and then the opacity menu right there. And then just kind of play with it, drop it down until it kind of looks good. Uh, right there looks pretty decent. But now that I've got that, I'll kind of go back in here and erase a little bit of that. Just because if you have an entire area, like this part of the the uh, turkey that's coming down, if you have the entire area shadowed, you can't really tell that it's shadowed because nothing um, else is there as far as colors to, to let you know, hey, there's two different colors here. So, And then I'll just kind of go around. This far left edge is going to get more shadows than anywhere else so that's where i want to focus on first and honestly don't worry about being too 
perfect as you're doing this. I'll usually throw stuff down really quick and then go back in with the eraser. Kind of lighten some areas and, and fix some up. And as long as you're, uh, you know, following how the light source would come in and you're putting the shadows in the right position, there's really not a right or wrong answer as far as, okay, well, this shadow needs to be perfectly here. Um, the more you do it, the better you'll get with it, and it'll make a little bit more sense. So just uh, kind of some background on this image. Um, <clears throat> this is actually a commission for a stand-up comedian by the name of Jeff Bodart. Uh, I don't know if any of the viewers today, if you listen to the Bob and Tom show, it's a syndicated morning show uh, that runs in the, the United States. Um, he's actually uh, one of the comedians that's a regular guest on that show. He's also a, con a contributing writer for that show. But um, this joke that this originates from, uh, he was on the show and the, oops, just noticed this area here. I got a little bit of yellow from the beak in there. We'll fix that. So he was on the show and uh, the sound engineer uh, had said, hey, you know, the first French fries weren't actually fried in France. They were fried in Greece. You get it? Yeah. So uh, as bad as that was, um, Jeff's response uh, that day when he was a guest, he just said, boo, and everybody was shocked. And then he yelled, oh, what's a duck fried in? Turkey. And then quiet, nothing, no response. And then he said, turducken, see, turducken. And then the Josh said, oh, there's nothing there, man. And Jeff said, oh, it's better than the crap that's over there. So uh, it's funny because he's been on the show since that, and they gave him a lot of crap for how bad they thought the joke was. But uh, on Twitter, his followers thought it was pretty funny, and the, the roasting that came from it was pretty funny. Uh, so he's been back on the show since and they keep bringing it up every time he's on. So he thought, you know what? I need to make this into a shirt. But if you don't know who Jeff Bodart is, funny, funny guy, uh, check him out. He's online, jeffbodart.com. You can go there. He's got a website, tours all around the country doing stand up. Uh, he also actually is pretty talented at making wands. He has a wand company as in like Harry Potter type of wands. Uh, it's Tarbo Wands. If you go to jeffbodart.com, you can uh, link to his wand store and his stand-up and his merch and all that stuff. So check him out. He's a funny, funny dude. And I'm just slowly going through here and building up the shadows. You see on this side, I'm wanting these stacked so to make it look like these are stacked. This one is gonna throw a shadow here and then I just kind of repeat that pattern for the stacking. It just basically shows that the one above it is sitting higher because it's gonna cast a shadow since it's higher than the last. And you'll see I do a lot of zooming and a lot of adjusting the canvas. like to get pretty close that way you can tell like on this area here I really like to get uh, if there's curves like this I really like to get that shadow to follow the same curvature as in this case the the feathers since this one's behind and to the far left I'm actually gonna fill in this entire thing and then, like I said, to show that that still has that shadow on it, you can pull and just do a light line on the edge. This really isn't correct as far as the way a shadow would work. You wouldn't have this highlight over here, but it helps to show that this whole area is shadowed because um, your eye sees this lighter part and, and knows that that's what's going on. So... Uh, same thing with here. Since this leg comes down, the shadow is going to be on the underside. Once again, you got the light coming in here. Uh, 
honestly just going back in and repeating the same thing over and over. Uh, so we've got the turkey, we've got the duck coming out of the turkey, and then we've got the chicken coming out of the duck. Since the uh, duck's coming out of here, this is going to cast a shadow because it's underneath and it's actually coming out of him, so that's going to be shadowed pretty heavy. And this just creates the illusion that these things actually have some weight to them and are casting shadows. It just kind of adds to the, the overall design. Now to make things easy today, I am, like I showed you, just using black for everything on one layer and then just dropping the opacity. The other option that you could do is if you are uh, wanting to get a little bit closer to the colors, if you make a new layer, you can select your main color and just, you know, get a darker color for the shadows on this. Oops. So this is actually that color. Now the problem with this is I can jump from any color and add a shadow when I'm using that opaque black. If you're doing this, you can't just hop over here and use that on here because that's not going to be the correct shadow for this lighter color. So you're going to have to go in and you're going to have to change these individually. And then like this, where I was doing lines, you're not going to be able to do a solid line. You're going to have to change the color here. You're going to have to change the color here and you're going to have to match up all those lines. And it's going to kind of be a pain. So that's why I like to stick with uh, just doing the black and then dropping the opacity down. It makes things a lot easier. Um, you know, certain designs, especially if you want it to look better and take longer, uh, doing it the other way gives you a lot more control over it. Um, so I guess really just depends on what your design calls for. This is kind of the, the quick and dirty way to do it. And you don't lose a whole lot by doing it this way. Uh, it gives it a nice uniform look, that, especially like on t-shirts and stuff. I, I definitely like this uh, this way of doing things. So, so just building this up. This is going over to the highlighted side closer, but since you've got the light coming in here, this bottom part's still going to have a little bit of a shadow. And you'll see once I get to the highlights, I honestly use uh, shadows a lot more than what I do highlights. I do go a little bit more sparingly on highlights. Don't use too many. Um, and like I said, when you uh, when you do the, the real life test of grabbing an object, throwing that uh, flashlight on it, you're going to see that you're going to see more shadows than you're going to see highlights. Highlights are a little bit less when you go in real life so keep that in mind as you're going through and doing this process and here I'm just like I said following the same curvatures of the lines getting it to look as uniform as possible it just reads a lot better when It follows that that same line path. And then like here, my mindset is okay. All these lines, they're gonna cast their own shadow. So anything that has a line that's on top of it, that's where I'll go and hit. And this I'm just doing the edge since it's the far edge. It kind of leads into that there. I am going to hit that one time there just so I've got a little bit of a difference so you can tell that it is shadowed. And then all these, of course, they're going to cast a shadow from this part of the neck sitting on top of the body and then with these individual feather parts coming out they're going to cast a shadow left and right because they're stacked on top of each other but there's where I'm going to stop the shadows 
because this then is going to start into the highlights because the light's coming this way so it's actually not going to cast a shadow over here because you've got your light coming in over here so And even though this is on the highlight side, since they are sitting on top of each other, the one feather's higher, these are going to cast a shadow as well. Since this is on the other side, uh, on the underside, this is going to be shadowed. You'll see here, like I did, just to get that nice curve. I won't stop at that leg. I'm not gonna hide or not gonna shadow that leg, but I want that same curve. And rather than stop in here, and I'll just go completely over it and then erase it. So it's one continuous line there. Shadow here. This one I'm gonna kind of curve out. So the body's gonna cast a little bit more of a shadow because of the weight of this here. So I'll bring that one out a little bit more and I'm actually gonna fill that one completely in. Honestly, it's just going back and forth, building it up and you'll think one part's done and then go back and look at it and say, well, there's maybe more I can do to this section or you'll look at it and say, you know, actually, this is a little bit too much, so. Same thing with these feathers that are coming off. This one side is going to sit a little bit lower because you've got that split down the center. So I'm going to color in these left sides of the feathers. Make them look a little bit more three-dimensional. And this honestly is more of a, you know, like a cell shading, uh, cartoonish way of shadowing. Um, if you're doing more realistic stuff, I mean, the principle is the same as far as using the light source and knowing where the shadows bounce off. So you can kind of take what's in today's video and apply it as needed with, with whatever you're working on. It'll be a little bit different between the different cases, but the main idea is the same. Okay, keep going. And this here, this is going to be one of the farthest parts from the light source and the way the body hits it, so I want to make this pretty thick down here. It's going to take away some of the stuff I've already done, but it needs to have more. shadow here because it's tucked up underneath that leg section and once you start throwing down the shadows and looking at them you can kind of tell um, if it looks natural or not you're so used to seeing shadows in real life that yeah it's it's one thing to to lay them down but your mind will, or your eye will tell you, once you have something down, if it's not right, you can kind of tell. And the more that you do this, the better you're going to get at it, too. And these I'm going to go pretty heavy on. Since they're the furthest over, and... Same thing with the legs here. One thing to kind of consider too when you're adding colors, I know this is a, a highlighting and a shadowing tutorial, but 
you'll kind of see what I did with having so many similar objects. You've got the, the turkey and the duck and the chicken, but the color selection. The only thing that really kind of runs in together is the two browns here. It's not exactly the same, but you'll see I chose the gray for the body of the duck since it's so much different uh, than the brown. And then same thing with the, uh, the feet and the legs. For the turkey, I went with the yellow and then the orange for the duck and then the chicken. You've got a really similar design going straight down and you don't want it to get too cluttered up. So color choice on this one was kind of important to, to make sure that it was still readable even though it was a pretty complicated design. But it was necessary to be complicated uh, due to the joke that was what was trying to be portrayed in the design. So, Really curious to know what you guys use as far as apps. Um, if you came to this video because it's a Procreate video or if you use anything else do you guys use photoshop do you use clip studio um see that one affinity the new one came to the ipad i really want to try that one i think i downloaded it but trying to learn a new program is always rough when you're so used to using certain ones and i know the layout uh, just looking at it, it's a little bit more complicated it's one thing i've really liked about procreate is how streamlined this is and See, as I'm flipping through stuff, it's become really second nature, but I want to try that one out. So it's on my list of things to do this year. Same thing I want to use more with Clip Studio. I used to be big into Clip Studio back when I used the, the Surface Pro. Um, but then downloaded the, the iOS one and haven't got into it too much. It would have been nice if they tried to make it a little bit more uh, geared towards the iPad. Um, it was kind of cool getting on and seeing, okay, this is the exact desktop version, but at the same time, it's really kind of cluttered with all the menus, so... I just love Procreate having this huge it's a huge screen number one but then also the just the huge viewing space to where you don't have all the tools everywhere it makes it kind of nice i've gotten really accustomed to the look and if you guys don't use a tablet do you use uh well at least a tablet with a screen uh do you use a, a wacom tablet into a type or what what model of that do you have so I always like to hear what everybody's workflow is and what everybody uses, what works for them. Here we don't want to do too much because we're getting into the highlighting area, but with the light source coming down from this direction, you're still going to have shadows on the side on the bottom sections of the objects. So. Another thing I really want to get into this year is uh, making brushes for Procreate. I haven't done too much with that yet, and it's definitely something that I want to try out. It can solve a lot of problems just uh, for stuff that I use all the time and have to kind of juggle through if I can make the perfect solution for you know pretty much any type of problem. It'd be cool to be able to offer those to you guys. So that's something on the list for 2019. We'll see. Is there anything uh, in particular you guys want me to cover this year? Definitely let me know in the comments. Be looking for new ideas. Uh, like I said, I know um, the last video I did, the uh, logo designer, that one uh, actually came from a comment suggestion. This one as well came from a comment suggestion. Um, and then... I think the next one that I'm going to do is um, I had somebody ask me for a video just 
not so much on you know how to use an app or anything like that but just more drawing tutorials he just wanted me to do a tutorial on how to draw bodies so if that's something you guys would like to see let me know and if so um as far as bodies go what type of stuff do you guys like to draw what do you want to see me do as far as bodies i don't know more cartoony stuff like this of animals or uh you know cartoon people yeah that request actually came from uh one of the guys i got to know pretty well over the past year or so his name is jason um i don't know if you guys follow on uh instagram or twitter i think i've talked about it a little bit on there uh, i've been doing the the art for a new card game uh was launched on kickstarter last year it's called unicorns and zombies and jason is kind of the mastermind behind that and he started watching the videos on here and was like dude you need to do a how to draw bodies video so that's next up on the list jason If you guys haven't seen that yet, uh, hop over to Kickstarter and check it out. Like I said, Unicorns and Zombies is the name of it. Uh, it's a pretty cool cool card game. You uh, select if you're going to be Team Zombie or Team Unicorn, and then it's a fight to the death, pretty much. There's character cards, there's item cards, action cards. Um, we put a lot of work and time into it. Um, Card-wise, I've lost count how many cards there are. There's a ton and then uh, we just got done doing the not safe for work pack so those were pretty fun doing those doing stuff uh, a little bit more risque and uh, not as PC so those were pretty cool all right Let's see what else getting close Getting close on the shadows. All right. I think that's going to be good on the shadows. We'll, we'll drop some in here because with the light coming down, it is going to throw a shadow down here. All right. That should be good. Okay. Now for the, the highlights, basically the, the same idea going to go ahead and go in here make a new layer like i said no matter what program you use if you can do layers and opacity this idea is the same just uh bring it over to to whatever program you're using as far as the the techniques go so we've got that now i'm going to go ahead and it's really hard if you've got a white background to see once you start going in with highlights so i'm actually going to change this background to let's do a blue color just so if you get out of the lines you're going to be able to see it right away and then I'm just going to start hitting some of these edges. Now the highlights are going to be a little bit different than the shadows because um, the highlights are going to show up different on different colors. I'll show you what I mean here. So these aren't too bad, but you'll see, you can still see the highlight on the brown, but the highlight on the yellow is almost disappeared. So you might have to make a second set of highlights for different colors putting a one uh, set of highlights on dark colors and putting one set of highlights on light colors so that way you can adjust the opacity because if you get it to where it's going to show up on light colors it's going to be too bright and look kind of fake and blown out on the dark colors and here like i said i'm just tracing those lines Sometimes on the side that's really close, I'll put a, a couple of just kind of like little round glares. Shows you that the light it's bouncing off there. Same thing with the, the beak here. Kind of put a glare coming down. So just tracing those lines on the outside here and there. With the feathers, I'm not going to go super crazy because 
Obviously with feathers, you don't get a huge amount of shine or highlights on the feathers. So it's just going to be a little bit here and there. I'm actually going to drop this down probably a little bit more opacity wise. It looks a little bit more. There we go. A little bit more subdued, so. With these, with the feet, I kind of want to go a little bit heavier on those so they kind of have that wet, kind of shiny look to them. You'll see here, I've got a shadow pretty heavy on the bottom, and it looks weird to have, you know, a straight shadow here, and then a line of the regular color here, and then a line for a shadow, or a line for a highlight there, so I'll actually just hit this with a, a short little line like that, that doesn't connect, but it still kind of gives the, uh, the effect that there's that highlight there. Same thing here, just hit these edges real light. As you guys can see too, still haven't upgraded iPads. I'm still on the uh, first generation 12.9 Pro. Never did go with the, the newest one. Like I said, still waiting to see how Photoshop handles between everything, so not in any hurry. I can, I can wait it out. If you watch my previous video, I talked about the differences in the RAM of the, uh, the new iPads that just came out. And to get the top RAM, you have to get the uh, one terabyte version Pro which I'm not really looking to spend that on something that for right now you don't get any performance boost out of. So maybe once Photoshop comes out, I don't know, we'll see. We will see. And here, like I said, just doing a couple little lines, give that effect, not going in super hard with the, the highlights there. I think I kind of want to do one here too. Oops. side of the body get that exact curve so it looks natural that's why I keep going and undoing and going back in I do that constantly I think I draw and erase probably 90% more lines than what I actually end up with so yep, and that's the yellow so we're gonna go back in with the highlights on that so all right I think that's pretty good for there. So let's go ahead and one more layer, and that's going to wrap us up then. Um, oh, I actually did go on that yellow there, so I'm going to clear that out. So this new layer here is going to be that highlight color for the lighter areas, so we can adjust the opacity so it shows up a little bit more than what it would with the darker areas. And just hitting the sides again. dots here I think I'm actually gonna on this orange like you see can't really see that that well so I'm gonna use the the lighter highlight layer here one of the lines a little bit there so I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up. Drop this background again to the white so you can see. And that's what a finished uh, finished product pretty much looks like. So thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw in the link to this design 
in the description of the video. Uh, I'm shooting this over to Jeff. Uh, he already has the uh, the text worked up for it and picked out, so he's going to finish up the uh, the heavy lifting there. He wanted me just basically to do the the illustration design. So, um, like I said, I'll, I'll throw a link to that into the description. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully, you got some good information from it. Uh, if you did, make sure you click that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, Jeff Bodart, check him out. The link's in the description. Funny guy. As for me, I can be found online, bjdell.com, and on Twitter and Instagram at bjdell. So until next time, keep creating.